For those of you who know a little bit about my story, many of you know that I went to Indiana University and that while at Indiana University, I had to memorize a lot of facts very quickly and that I didn't feel that maybe some of them were going to be utilized. Surprise, surprise, I'm using all of them now in my career, so lesson learned. Um, but while there, I make no bones about the fact that I was not maybe the best student ever, but that I did start studying with the Harvard brain scientist, uh, Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor, and that Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor helped me understand that my brain um, simultaneously needed to entertain both the right and the left side of the brain so that I would have a greater level of retention of facts. And that as part of this, um, I would remember the materials as well as I would just be a happier person. So um, here are some of the ways that I uh, memorized some of the music history and the ways that I teach it now. Um, we are going to start off today in the 14th century France. The 14th century France had a dominant composer named Michaud. Michaud is spelled M-A-C-H-A-U-T. And in this case in France, of course, the C-H makes the sh sound. Um, I, honest to God, remember this as a valley girl. And in my head, I say, Michaud, oh my God, shut up. And it's spelled with a C-H. Because I need to just shut up. All right, let's talk about the 14th century France and Michaud. Uh, Michaud is a composer that is a true Renaissance man. Um, he bridges the gap and composes in both a sacred and secular style. Of great importance is the fact that um, his music um, is going to entail a mass, and this mass is the first work that is written and compiled completely by one composer. So Michaud will put his name on it and say, hey, I wrote that. And he's not just gonna give all the credit to God as composers um, before him had. So we see that he takes full credit, putting some individual emphasis on the man and the power of the man. All right, now he is represented in this case as a pirate. Even though Michaud is not actually a pirate in his lifetime, um, I refer to him as a pirate simply because the picture has a lot of different characteristics that we're going to go through that represent the time period. And also that the 14th century France, Michaud is the best composer of what is known as the Ars Nova. Ars Nova in France in the 14th century means the new art. Okay, um, this new art is going to replace what had come before it, known as the Ars Antiqua. The Ars Antiqua, um, of course, pirates existed beforehand, so we still have the Ars. And then the Antiqua, of course, represents if you want to go buy something old, you're going to go buy antiques. So we have the Ars Antiqua, which is the old art, which is replaced in the 14th century France by the Ars Nova and Michaud's new style of composition. Uh, characteristics of the Ars Nova, first off, we have Michaud's peg leg to help you remember this. Um, the Ars Nova has a greater use of uh, rhythmic complexity. Uh, this rhythmic complexity, if you've ever heard a pirate walk with a wooden leg, you'll hear that use of uh, rhythm and also the disjointedness of it that creates a greater level of syncopation, which is an example of how music is evolving during this time period. We see the ability to notate syncopation taken to a greater level. Um, like all great pirates during his time period, he has a trusty little sidekick, and in this case, his trusty little sidekick, like all great pirates, is going to be a bird, and in this case, it's Polly. Arr! Polly wants a cracker. Um, Polly, who wants a cracker, is not only named Polly because she is his trusty sidekick, but because music during this time period is increasingly polyphonic. Okay. Polyphonic, poly meaning poly, uh, phonic of course meaning sound. So we're seeing uh, multiple lines happening simultaneously and that this is replacing what was happening before, which is monophonic music, which is of course mono meaning one, meaning single line melody. So we see the use of polyphonic um, changing out the uh, use for monophonic as a characteristic of the Ars Nova. 
Um, okay, so this is the 14th century France Michaud. Oh my gosh! Sound. Um, again, linked to the Ars Nova, which replaces the old art, which is the Ars Antiqua. A time period where we see an emphasis on the man, that he can compose a work and take credit for it. Uh, greater rhythmic syncopation given to us by our peg leg, and also monophonic music being replaced by polyphonic music represented by our trusty little sidekick, Polly, who still wants a cracker. Um, okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you learned a little something while you're at it. If you feel like critiquing my sweet art skills, go ahead in the comments down below. I have no problem admitting that I am not an art major. I just wanted to be ent entertained as a music major. Um, and if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of my crazy music history videos for the uh, month of May as I go through my online class, uh, make sure that you go ahead and click the subscribe. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.